I'm going to keep my remarks quite brief. Uh, uh, I'm going to try to keep to the 15 minute, minute guidance. And I want to therefore just, <laughs> I want to therefore just, just in a certain sense, lay out in the, book, in the, you know, in, in the boldest of terms uh, some ideas which I think will then get the discussion going and I'm sure we'll have a chance to have some give and take thereafter. First of all, I want to start with a couple of disclaimers. First, I haven't got the slightest interest or anything approaching the competency to defend all religions or religion in general. I mean, obviously, the religious impulse is essentially universal to humankind. There's a lot to be said for treating other people's uh, beliefs seriously, as I believe uh, 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 that Professor Adams does. Um, but it seems completely clear to me that the teachings of different religions are simply incompatible with one another in lots of cases, and that therefore some of them cannot be true. Now, I believe in Jesus, and so the religious belief that I'm going to be recommending is Christianity, and I suppose there's no surprises there. Um, second disclaimer, I think Christianity is true, but I don't feel any compulsion to defend everything that has been done in its name. In fact, I will immediately stipulate that some very foolish and some very bad things have been done in the name of Christ. Uh, Christians are very, imperson, very imperfect individuals, like everybody else. Um, Christian churches are very Im imperfect social organizations, just like every other organization. And that's what Christianity has always taught. Okay. So... With those disclaimers, let me start. The starting presupposition, I would claim, for most arguments in the intellectual West today is that there is no reality beyond what is discoverable by natural science and that there is no authority or good higher than the freedom of the individual. Both science and individual freedom are very good. But Christians have a different view. We believe that both the deepest reality and the highest moral meaning and authority are found in loving relationship. We believe that this universe exists because a God whose nature is love, expressed in relationship, has willed it and loves it. We believe that individuals are loved by God and find their true fulfillment in entering willingly into a relationship with Him and into re loving relationships with one another. Now, of course, we can see around us that everything is not love. That's very plain. There's a great deal of pain, alienation, anger, strife, and war. Christians believe that God has entered into the experience of his creation in the person of a human, Jesus, and that he's taken upon himself the suffering and alienation of the world at great cost and overcome it. We believe that this stupendous redeeming act took place in history in front of practically the whole population of a small country. And that the result echoes up and down the centuries. Now, if this Christian view is true, how would one go about confirming it? The militant atheists of today that, that um, Professor Adams has, has referred to, whose books are, are on the best bestsellers list, tell us that there is no evidence for Christianity or for theism generally. But I would say that their assertion rests on an unfounded position that the only <coughs> evidence that counts comes from the application of the methods of science. So, for example, Richard Dawkins, in his book, The God Delusion, says, Did Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead? Did he himself come alive again three days after being crucified? There is an answer to every such question, whether or not we can discover it in practice, 
and it is strictly a scientific answer. The methods we should use to settle the matter would be purely and entirely scientific methods. And he says the same thing in about six or seven other places in the book. But this is really silly. I mean, I'm an applied physicist. Uh, I have tremendous respect for and experience with um, the power and rigor of science in deciding questions about the natural world. But the questions that Dawkins has posed there are not questions about nature. They're questions about history. For more information about the Veritas Forum, including additional recordings and a calendar of upcoming events, please visit our website at veritas.org.